Hello everyone and welcome to another bumper episode of the brand new looking short shoot show, the Super League Triathlon Podcast. I've kicked Macker off on this one. He just wasn't up to scratch. And this time instead, we have the great Tim Don wearing his rest day hoodie. I don't know what Tim's rest day looks like, probably three to four hours of training. And Annie Emerson, who's sitting down because she can't walk, having just run a sub-255 marathon. So these two making me feel exceptionally fat. We'll start with you, Annie. How are you, mate? That's not your house. Where are you, first of all? Oh, just annual trip to lovely Devon for a bit of surfing, beach, and rest, because I need it. Because if you saw me walking, it's a, it's a pathetic sight, honestly. Two days. Where are we? Tuesday? Three days after the marathon now. And um, I'm pretty broken. I think that's always a good feeling, though, because I think if you're broken, like, you know, you've, you've left nothing out there. So that's how I feel. But it's quite amusing to watch me walk. It's kind of like a sort of drunk woman with a hairbrush stuck where it shouldn't be kind of thing that's the look it's not good <laughs> that's very visceral description that you just gave us there and i'll be thinking about that over the next hour or so of the show tim i'm just worried which, which way is her hairbrush are you talking about <laughs> tim look at tim's hair tim has never seen a hairbrush I've never seen a hairbrush in my life. <laughs> well, this is not the first one that you want to see. Let me let me put it that way. Anyway, we're going to move on from that. Anyone who's still listening, uh, obviously massive fan of triathlon. So we're going to serve you up plenty across the course of the next hour or so. And we're going to start with the headlines. Tim, we're going to start with you. Um, you guys, it's it's nice having an Australian on because then there's a bit less British bias, but I've got two Brits on, so we're going to have to deal with that. And your headline is <laughs> Brits on fire. Can you tell me why? The British women are absolutely red hot right now. We've had three WTSs this year um, in, in um, three continents or subcontinents. We had um, Beth Potter run away up. Alex, um, Alex Yee Hill very convincingly over a sprint race, never looked in doubt. Um, that is the best race she's ever had. So she is definitely looking, moving this way off a fantastic Super League season last year. And then um, we had Sophie Coldwell in monsoon like conditions in Yokohama. Again, her best ever performance, getting on top of that podium, having podiums in um, Abu Dhabi. So two for two, two different women. And again, total control. She ran out of transition like she owned the place, not like it was she was chasing her first win. It was just great to see her development. And it's been a long development because I remember in like uh, mid 2000s, she was a school kid and her mum would drive her to Loughborough to swim with the high performance squad and then take her to school with the likes of Stewie Hayes, myself and Will Clark. Um, Vicky Holland when she was younger. So she's always been there, but that performance was just off the hook. And of course, we've just had Calgary and it was so nice to see GTB. Um, I wouldn't say back where she belongs because no one belongs on the podium. You earn it. But just to see her, you know, a dominant, she's got her swim back to where it has to be. She hasn't been swimming that well this year, made the lead group and they were so dynamic on the bike, those um, seven women. And again, she went toe to toe with Lombardi, but it always looked like she had something left in the tank. Three WTSs, three wins and the piece de resistance, the thing that for me that wraps it all up was the Edinburgh Marathon. Mm, Annie that, yeah. winning, winning by over 30 minutes <laughs> and getting close to a British record. That is just magnanimous. I love it. Give us give us the rundown, Annie. So hang on, you finished eighth overall, the Edinburgh Marathon. You won your age group mm. by 30 minutes. Is that what happened? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that, actually. You know, that, I saw a sort of funny thing on um, the other day on, on social media, and it, it, it was one of those little motivational clips, and it's like a race against myself, you know. I'm not out to beat other people. Okay, in a different life, you know, of course I was out to beat other people, but at this stage in my life, it's it's about challenging myself and seeing what my body's got left in it. I know that sounds perhaps a little bit cheesy, but, you know, it's, it's been a tough six months training for this marathon. I've had everything from shin splints to hip problems to bunion problems, you know, just a little things you get when you get to my age um but listen putting it all aside we we decided um didn't we way back when we came back from neon tim that we were going to run a marathon unfortunately you didn't get to the start line um and then empty. i was too broken no you didn't 
So, you know, obviously MD, Michael Deltz, the CEO of Super League, it was his idea. And uh, I was just amazed that the months went past and I was still in one piece and stood on the start line um, at the weekend and thought I was a little bit broken, didn't really know how I was going to go. And I just went hard from the gun. And I loved it. I didn't like the last five miles. They were ugly. I wanted to sit down. I just wanted to sit down on the pavement. And something in my head just said, like, you know, get your ass in gear, girlfriend. You're not giving up now. Like, just you've just got to keep going. So, yeah, I was well chuffed to get under 255. But that's it now, guys. That's it. Just if I mention a marathon ever again, just, just just remind me of those last five miles. What did you say to Michael when you overtook him with about five, six K to go? Or, or Hang on, did, did you only you? overtake him with five K to go? <laughs> Didn't you hear the explosion? No, 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 I, you hear the explosion? <laughs> I overtook him at about 21 miles. So with about five miles to go. And um, I so saw- How far behind did you start? How far um, behind did you start? I don't like, think I've, no, we started together on the start line. No. We started together. Oh, and she beat him by nearly, nearly by 15 minutes, she beat him. So she really, really nailed it. But he still ran a 3.10. No, no. I mean, I'm impressed with that. 3.03. Well. 303. No. Michael did. Yeah. 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 Because it was his gun, gun time. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You're both very fast. I'm glad I was not available for this. <laughs> so when I ran past him, I just said to him, um i'm and the the next word begins with f and ends in d and he just was brilliant he just went keep going keep going and um yeah i mean i did keep think going. i'd catch him and run with him yeah keep going bro. Adrian. You've got this. keep going keep going annie i'm Bloody coming man. behind you <laughs> but anyway i waited I waited for him on the finish line and I was like, where is he? What the hell has happened uh, to him? Anyway, that's my marathon chat. It was great. I loved it. I'm, I'm not doing another one. End of. Very good. Very good. Uh, that's all the, ha- all the time we have here on the uh, Short Shoot Show. <laughs> We've had to skip all the other topics. <laughs> um, um, second topic, uh, topic from you. Uh, I said Tomic. Oh, Bernard Tomic. Sorry, that's tennis. I don't want to talk about that guy. Uh, second topic. <laughs> I didn't know this until you wrote it in the thing. So Iron Man quietly changes Kona and Nice selection for past pony and finishes in the hope that Norwegians will race without having to race an Iron Man. Can you explain? Yes, BS basically. So basically, if you've podiumed in an Iron Man, you only um, in the if you've won an Iron Man for five years, you can go to an Iron Man World Champs. You just have to validate. So you just have to finish an Iron Man. You don't have to get a selection spot. And if you podiumed the next second and third, the next year, again, you just have to finish an Ironman so you can finish last, um, which has always been a bit funny because I think the year T.O., Tim O'Donnell, he podiumed. He then about three weeks later went to do Florida Ironman and him and Rinny, they walked the run together eating crisps because <laughs> all they had to do was finish and they ran like a six hour marathon and Ironman were like, what the heck? But they still kept that in play to, to give the reward for doing well. But obviously, Christoph and Gustav, Christian and Gustav are not doing an Ironman this year because of Olympic selection. Um, so, yeah, they've changed it. If you are one of those people, you, you automatically get to start the next year. They haven't made a big deal. So Sam Laidlow went to Lanzarote and he didn't finish because he <laughs> the bed and um, he had like cold shivers and got heat stroke. Um, so theoretically, he should do another race. But because Ironman have this new clause in place, he's quids in for Nice. So someone like Chelsea Sodaro doesn't need to do an Ironman, but if you finish outside the podium, you have to not only do an Ironman, but also get a good place. And I think there's no rhyme or reason for them to change it. The system worked, um, but they've just done it to get the big names there because they're worried, which is quite ironic because they don't really support the big names, in my opinion, really. You know, they're not like PTO throwing extra prize money, appearance fees like Collins Cup. They're not like Super League. They don't have masses of races with live tv on on major networks so yeah i just think you know yeah it's, it's not not very cool really the norwegian rule so is that just for the next year or are you saying now that's five years like you win you podium somewhere and you can just pretty much write your own ticket they haven't specified they did a small like comment on one of their um memo things saying that that's the rule this year whether they try and carry it on I'm not no, sure. They need to because then the Norwegians will not be going for the Olympics anymore so they can just roll it back again. <laughs> oh, well, maybe Gustav will. He's doing all right, actually. 
And it's it, we have. I guess it's now common knowledge, but um, Eden's had a lot on his plate, so fair play to the fella. He has, he has indeed. He has indeed. Obviously, if you want to check out what's going on with Gustav, you can go to his social media. He's been very honest about all that. We move on to Annie's headline, and your headline is Brownlee breaks. And why is that, Annie? Well, as we know, there was going to be a pretty big showdown in, in Hamburg and with Fredino, uh, Brownlee and uh, Newsom. But unfortunately, um, Brownlee's had to pull out again um, with, with an injury. And I think this is really disappointing um, for him, obviously, firstly, uh, and his fans. But I guess at, at some point you're going to have to go, is my body trying to tell me something here? Like, I, I understand the fight to continue, but um, you, you pulled out another race. Of course, he hasn't quite qualified for Nice and he will have to find another race. But, you know, where are we now in June? You know, if he's got an injury that's bad enough for him to pull out, um, where, where is he going to go for, in between now and Nice? It's a really difficult one. We don't know the extent of the injury, you know, kind of wish him well. But it's really disappointing that um, yeah that we won't see him racing. We won't see the battle against him and Fredino at the weekend in Hamburg. Isn't it kind of funny? Like he kind of didn't do anything for eight months, and then he raced every single possible different type of race for one month, and then he raced a gra- uh, gravel race in Gralloch in uh, Scotland, and then he he did the. He did a beta and he did something else that escapes my mind. He did British his... Xterra champs. British yes, Xterra, Xterra which he won yeah. that race as well, uh, yeah. qualifying for the world champs. But like he did that in three weekends in a row and then then he's like, and then he goes, the Ironman can't do it. So can you imagine if Alistair trained with his head and raced with his head, not his heart, it'd be, it'd be a double Olympic champion. <laughs> <laughs> he used to call Johnny the training, the training numpty or whatever, the training numpty, because he, he could never, he could never listen to his body, but now Alistair's doing similar stuff. So, uh, look, let's hope we see him on the start line in Nice and in, and in, uh, where's he going? Austria, maybe. I don't know where he's going to go to, to, to qualify, but. Let's hope he qualifies and 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 keeps moving forward because we we need him in the sport as long as possible. Um, at the other end of the scale is my headline, and it's it piqued my interest when Hayden Wild semi compared his battle with Alex Yee that's ongoing to like a Javier versus Alistair battle from back in the day. And I, what he's referring to is the fact that there's not one person just streeting everybody in WTCS racing. They're having great battles. And again, Alex Yee, despite the fact that he tripped over at the start, did a little David Hasselhoff, he still came back in the end and outran Hayden. Who, and Hayden must be thinking to himself, what do I need to do, man, to beat this guy? Because he's never beat him in a head-to-head race where they've both been fit and they've both been there. But is this another Javier Alistair battle? that We're, we're going to see these guys do battle and continue to do so for years or someone else, obviously Leo Berger is there as well. I mean, what's going to happen next? What, uh, Tim, what do you reckon? You're t- tipped into these guys. Well, uh, probably controversial. He um, Hayden did actually beat him when he was fit and healthy because he took him out on the bike at Leeds. I shouldn't have said That's that. That's true. <laughs> I'm only joking, Hayden. We love you. We love... No, but Hayden cannot have that mindset. Because if Hayden has that mindset, have he never beat Alistair? So he's already admitting defeat. And I believe he can beat him. You know, his method, he is such a classy athlete, Hayden. I just think, you know, he is always there to pounce. At the moment, Alistair, I mean, Alistair, I mean, sorry, not Alistair. Alex Yee's start was appalling. The, oh, but that's another, that's something else. But um, yeah, I, I hope he doesn't feel like that because he's got to believe he can do it. I mean, he, the closest he got was the Commonwealth Games, but he got a penalty. Mm. Um, you know, he was off the front on the bike. But um, yeah, I mean, it is a co and overt. I mean, for those people who are really into their triathlon, it is a lesson and Spencer Smith. It is a Mark Allen and Dave Scott. You know, this could be a, and they're so young that if they both decide to go long course, which we definitely know Hayden will, my gosh, we could be watching them in Kona in 15 years time while Annie breaks another marathon world record. Um I'll be dead. You know, going toe to toe. I tell I tell you something that I saw though at that race at the weekend in Cagliari that I I do think that he has got this, uh, you know, the, the upper hand definitely, and I think you could see it with. Hayden Wild and and actually we're looking at them and you're thinking God he doesn't look like he's like flat out you know but with 400 I mean obviously there's a mental battle going on they've ran the 10k together but I think he almost gives up he almost knows that I just think at the moment I'm not sure what Wild has to do to break 
uh, Alex Yee, he either has to go early, that's not going to happen, or he has to beat him in the sprint. And and I just don't see that happening. I just I just don't see it happening. And and I wonder if he's kind of given up by that stage. That he thinks it's not going to happen. That he just has to settle for second. Because in my mind, I think he had a bit more in the tank, but he gave up early. You know, only only Wild can oh, tell us if that's true or not. You saying that the Falcon you, just phoned it in at the back I end? Know. Oh, huge headline, Emerson. Says Hayden gives up. Oh, put it down now, Super League. Put it on social media. Let's see what, what the Falcons say. Don't worry, they will put it on social leader. They yeah. love it. Like, uh, and the crew down in social. <laughs> I'm not saying he gave up, but um, you, you, he doesn't look like he's coming across the line, like absolutely battered from chasing this guy down. And I know there's a lot more to it in, in racing and run racing, but he did seem to suddenly go ping and that was it. And I and I just think the last sort of 400 metres, he gave up the fight. And, you know, but I think Alex, he's probably mm. quite impossible to impossible to beat now in those last sort of 400 meters of any triathlon i think anyone would struggle to beat him he's just so he's so quick and that maybe that's his track running that's his talent you know it was like when you know there was a it was a year or maybe a year and a half where at super league races like whenever vincent lewis came into the last 800 meters and someone was racing with him they just knew that they weren't going to be able to beat him on this kick. And he knew it and they knew it and he knew they knew it and everybody knew what was going to happen. And then it just continued to happen. And it was just like this uh, self-fulfilling prophecy where he just had a kick that kicked everyone. And maybe that's what this is. But as we know, it's a long career, right? So it might not always be that way. Um, and people have ups and downs. But Alex Yee, fastest runner in triathlon. It's, everybody knows it. So that's what's it's happened. It's not just that, it's his swim. It's a swim that's both of their swims have improved as well. So much, you know, yeah. and yeah, and that's what's setting them up for a, a wicked race. All right, it's time now for the stock market where we see whose stocks are rising and falling and why. All of our guests have got to give us a name or a situation and tell us why that stock is rising or falling. And we're going to start, let's start with Annie. Let's go with Annie. And uh, who is your rising stock? And we go back to short course for your rising stock again. Yeah, I mean, my rising stock has to be Emma Lombardi. I remember commentating on her race in Munich last year at the Euro Champs. And it was a really tough course. It was when Non, of course, uh, won the European Championships there in her final year as a, as a pro triathlete. And I remember watching Emma just thinking, you're, you, you're a hard ass. You're, you're not only talented, but you've got a lot of bottle. Like, And then watching her this weekend lead that swim out so confidently in Cagliari, I think that's her first uh, WTCS that she's led out. I mean, let's be honest, she hasn't run very many or raced very many of them anyway. Um, and she is only 23 this year. She's incredibly young. She was 25 seconds down on Georgia Taylor Brown on the run. Okay, Georgia's not back at her absolute best on the run. And the run, as we know, a bit controversial, but was definitely short. But to finish, um, I don't know if she's turned 23 yet. She's 23 this year. I think she's going to be a massive threat in Paris. I think she's got the brain. And I think, you know, she's got the physical capability as well to, to go all the way in Paris. Awesome. Well, considering that you've just done that, instead of going to your falling stock, let's just go straight to Tim's rising stock, which is kind <laughs> of connected and kind of your style is thunder, which you tend to do, Emerson. The French, where, <laughs> the, the French wave of men and women, you know, obviously the French, they didn't do what they wanted to do in, to in Tokyo and they've, but now they just seem really deep and they're going to be coming to Paris, you know, at home, just doing the job. I mean, it's going to be hard to make that team. Vive la France. I mean, that's this was second, a massive race. That's the race. second French statement you've made. <laughs> I'm getting into Paris, man. Sacre <laughs> bleu, Timothy. <laughs> Did I actually say that? Oh, my God. Um, no, this was a massive race for the French because it was only two. It was one of only two races this year. If they got a top five, they'd get the golden ticket, which is a start in the Paris Test event, which is their selection race. So the fact that Cassandra Beaugrant didn't go to Yokohama, she was putting all her eggs in one basket. But yeah, the French are coming. The depth there. I mean, the men. We've got the current world champion Leo. We've got Dorian and Pierre Lacour. Pierre Lacour can do 70.3. Um, Leo can do 70.3 because he won Oceanside. P Pierre's won 70.3. He's the military champion. He raced the weekend before Cagliari. 
Um, and then we've got Dorian, who is a Super League guy who got on the podium at Nice, European champion. And we're not even talking about Vince. Vince, you know, he had some great races last year. It's, it's, I mean, but he's injured. He's got the boot on and he seems a lot more stable, settled. And then the women, as you said, we've got the young Lombardi. She got second in Calgary WTS last year and this year on the podium at Europe. She is performing for the big races. She looks like, like above, yeah, old, not, she doesn't look older than she is, but she's racing with someone with years of experience, with, with, but with massive pressure on her, going into your home Olympics, needing to get a top five. She rests great. Leone as well, she qualified last year because um, she did well in an Olympic distance. So they've got, they've got a full team. Then we go long course. We've got Sam Laidlow on the podium. We've got Clement Mignon, who seems to be touching everything he wins. His partner, Marianne Pierre, she's the world long course champion. Emily Morier from Super League, ah, she's yeah. getting podiums now in 70.3s. And Alexia Bale, you know, they really are showing depth across, you know, short course, Super League, arena games, all the way, and that's all the way up to um, long course. I'm just, I'm just so impressed with what they're doing this year, um, given the how how big next year is going to be for them does anyone want to throw down and say vince is not going to make the olympics i think he's gonna i think the injuries when they start coming i mean <laughs> vince uh, you know he's he's hardly old but he must be around about it's about 33 now isn't he i think so and yeah i think you know, i think at some point that the body you know it's not a machine and it does start to break down and i think if you look at his running style you, you can see why he does break he has such huge lungs and heart and stuff that you know carry him through he's you know he's incredible in the water but I think the run is what's letting him down now and he's breaking and every time you break you're, you're missing another spell of training and you're taking you know it's like he's taking one step forward and then two steps back and I think it's so hard for him but then when we saw him last year in Bermuda win that race it was like oh there was a little sort of glimpse of, of the Vince yeah the, brilliant Vince that we know um, but I think he's going to have it tough to make that team I, I genuinely think he's going to have it really tough we're saying no and he says no he's not going to make it 100% 100% 100 he's going to make it oh I like your positivity going back to what you were saying Will about that 800 when he when everyone knows he's on form he has that air about him not cockiness not arrogance but total reassurance he will deliver and um, yet last, if you'd have asked me this before Bermuda, I would have gone maybe not. But the way he mm. raced in Bermuda, then he went to the grand final. And I, I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly, but I think he got a top five, top six, which was in a running race. He still ran very, very well. You know, he seems a bit more not so gung ho with his injury rehab now. I think in the past he would have trained, you know, he's now opening up more. He's, you know, he's more comfortable with with who he is i'm sure they're going to give him a wild card start for paris and if he can race in paris i think he can definitely beat some of those french athletes um, and they know that as well so they're not going our oh, vince is injured he's out no no way and he's a great team relay you know athlete yeah, you know the way in um, tokyo he tried to attack alex you know, like he, he was trying to create his own destiny. He wasn't just sitting there waiting for the run on the bike. He caught him. He attacked. He attacked, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he will make it. But it's a funny old game. It is. Anything could happen between now and then. It's a long way to go. I tell you what. What do I you just, think, I've, Will? Um, I, I, I've been watching this guy ever since I started to, like being interested in triathlon. And to be fair, like I can just never bet against him because I've just watched so many races where he's just – so strong i mean it hasn't i think he had a flat spot right but he just seems so happy now like you see his everything's changed for him like he's got a new partner and he's got a new place and he's had his hair no one no one can have that kind of new haircut without having supreme confidence like you've got to have literally <laughs> high very high levels of confidence to be able to pull that off so i would never bet against him i mean he's been because i mean for me like i only kind of when i kind of arrived in triathlon world was around the time when Vincent Lewis started to be awesome. And so I've just kind of, I got it in my head. Like, so I can't bet against him. I, and I wouldn't, I, I would dare not to. My stock rising, a completely, I, it's kind of separate to triathlon. It's something that I've been involved in a little bit myself, but mostly um, it's the Brownlee brothers and what they've done in uh, kids triathlon. So 
in 2014, they set up the Brownlee Foundation and they have kids go through their triathlons. And triathlon is such a good sport for kids because it introduces them to these core skills, which they already have a little bit of, right? So swimming, riding, and running is just these core skills that that just grows your athletic capacity and your confidence. And they've been doing kids triathlons for now the last uh, nine years. And on the weekend, they had their 50,000th kid through a Brownlee Foundation triathlon event, which is now Phoenix Kids Triathlon Um by the Brownlee Foundation. And they had 5,000 in one week up in Leeds and Bradford, et cetera. And I just thought that was absolutely amazing. And they deserve to be my stock rising, even though it's not controversial. I just think it's really cool. Uh, And one day we might see some of these little kids who I get to see photos and video of all the time in my other job, um, you know, take on triathlon as a sport. And I thought that was absolutely awesome. I'm going to do my stock falling now as well. My stock falling is Daniela Reef because... She had no reason. She's in four months of preseason. She came into that Ibiza race. She said fit, ready to go to see where she's at. And she was at nowhere. She was good until she was in the top, around the top 10 until halfway through the bike. And then she just had nothing on the day. And I, I think that like I only, it only stands out to me because of how strong she usually is. But that the packed field these days in a middle distance race like that Ibiza race is just there's so many contenders and I don't know where Danielle Reef is going to sit. Now, next weekend, she goes back to Switzerland and does this Rapperswell 70.3, which she's won seven times in a row. But she's going to come up against Ashley Gentle in that race. There's no one else of any real note. Um, but I can't bet. I, I mean, does she beat Ash Gentle in a race even it's one of her own? Or, or where is Daniela sitting in terms of where she's at right now? Because... She's done so much in the sport. Is it another like? Is it another legend of the sport in the twilight? And or do we see her come back and 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 kick ass again? I think that's, she's only one bad race. Um, I think that distance doesn't true, suit her. It's true. too short, too short, too fast for her. Um, she doesn't have that swim, um, you know, that weapon, um, you know, and you need to be right up. And it does help if you're right up there. Um, I think we'll see a different athlete, a different style of race in Switzerland this weekend. It's going to be a more a lonely race, um, you know, where you're swimming on your own, biking on your own and running on your own, a strength race, which would suit her. Um, everyone's yeah. beatable. No one's invincible. Um, but yeah, I would say she's definitely now more. She's gone back to her old coach, Brett Sutton, over the winter. But I don't think her ch- coaching philosophy changed that much. Um, if anything, as Brett would say, I'm going to stick a red hot poker up your ass and get you fit, love. Um, I'm sure he, he would, scares I'm sure me, he man. Would... He's a scary man. <laughs> yeah, I like to see a bounce back. Let's see what Iron Man she does this year. <laughs> mm, yeah, well, uh, Tim, your stock falling, and this was my one from last time, but it's fallen even further now uh, after what happened with Gwen Jorgensen getting lapped out. Yeah, I'm just confused, kind of like. Gwen is a, a an Olympic Olympic gold medalist from um, Rio, and then she decided to go to running, follow her dream. That was always a tough ask because um, over the last what like 12, 13 years, you know, American long and middle distance running has just been you know just getting stronger and deeper. Not that you know records have been falling, but there's so many so much depth there. She was trying for the was it the marathon, never made it. Switched to the track, never made it. Um, kind of like enjoyed herself, moved to Oregon from um, living at home. And now she's come back to triathlon saying she wants to make the team relay. And I just think, you know, she's ranked the eighth American. She's, I, I, I think she was advised incorrectly. I, you know, I, 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 I always thought from the start she had not no chance, but the game's moved on. And I think, I think that would have been a, a, a massive rude awakening for her. She flew all the way to Japan because she was on the wait list. She flew her husband and her two children. That must have cost a fortune. And she didn't race because she wasn't on the start list. She has done a, um, um, a, an Olymp- a sprint distance, which Katie Zafair has run, who herself is on the way back from having a baby. Um, Katie swam on her own, biked on her own, ran on her own. Gwen got second, but was a good minute behind her, having ridden and swam with people. Um, but yeah, I just feel that that I don't know what she's going to do now because I, I, I in no way do I see her getting another start in a WTS and then her executing, you know, a, a team relay. Are, are USA going to take a chance when they've got Taylor Nick, Taylor Spivey, Summer Rappaport, um, Katie Severes? They've got that young girl who is top twenty, and they've got Casper as um, yeah, Casper. What's her? Uh, 
Kirsten. Kirsten. Kirsten Casper. You were thinking it was Casper, you know. the friendly ghost. Casper Storm. <laughs> Casper <laughs> the friendly ghost yeah just sneaking in there but yeah and I just feel like you know as you said well a stock uh, you know like you, you, there's absolutely no chance of recovery I think they're going to be calling the liquidators in now. and I say that and I say that fair play to her but yeah I mean I just can't see you know no element was good let alone amazing you know um Oh, it doesn't seem yeah. that long ago that she was dominating. It was like 2015 or whatever, where she won like 13 races in a row. 2016 was a long, long way ago. Oh, God, yeah. I don't feel like it so tarnishes feel for, her yeah. record, but like it, it probably, for some people, like it tarnishes her amazing record from before. But like, you know, fair play to her for having a crack. But it, it does, sadly. And I just think, God, you know, like I, I think you, you said something there. She chased her dream with running. And and I think that's brilliant because it's always easy to sit in our comfortable place. Right. And not take that risk. Um, she was an incredible triathlete. Um, I don't think she always did herself any favours because she said she didn't actually like the sport, you know, and then to come back and say, I want to go for a place, you know, yeah, in, in the mixed relay, I think, uh, you know, again, it's a bit like her running career where she was, I think she thought it was going to be easier than it was, but there's a lot of incredible athletes in the American team. And, and I think she's got no chance, honestly. I mean, we know how important mm. the swim is for, for all of triathlon, but particularly for the mixed relay, how important it is to be quick. And she's lacking all of that. And we've got, you know, coming up for 12 months to go. And she's got a lot of other very hungry, very talented American uh, athletes athletes in front of her so I think she's got very little chance all right very quickly Annie your stock falling in and like you've got two here but like there's no one else outside of Alex and British men and the other one is Mario Mola what happened to Mario Mola like what he just swam off the back like I don't know what happened to him <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, just a, just a quick one because we're only allowed we're only allowed one. But you know, Mario, oh, I've always been a huge fan of him, him, and not least because, oh, look at he just is adorable. You just want to hug him, don't you? He's just the loveliest guy. Nah. And and also, let's not. No, you might not feel like that. Oh, I mean, I, I give him a high five, five but I get, your vibe. I get your vibe. Yeah. Okay. I think when you think what he used to achieve in WTS, when he used to get off a bike and start running and everyone knew he'd be coming and the way he executed those races, three three world titles, and to see him coming over a minute last out of the water. Yeah. Um, he won the Duathlon World Champs, amazing. Had a yeah. really good French Grand Prix, brilliant. Listen, I can only think he must have been ill at the weekend because cause to finish that far back, he, he wasn't that much slower than... Um, much quicker than than Gwen Jorgensen. He was 19 something out of the water. Don't don't know what was going on there, but I I hate to see that when someone's been so brilliant. And I think, you know, I think where Mario had it really badly was, I think COVID hit him hard and, you know, two years, he just hasn't been able to come back from that. You know, he dropped back to, his swim dropped off, obviously phenomenally. Um, But can I give my, can I give my, my main one that I wanted to give for my, um, okay, but if that was your, was that your short one? You know I don't do anything. I don't do anything quickly, a- apart from run marathons for an old bird, right? Mario has got the European champs in Madrid this weekend, so hopefully, yeah, he can and that could himself. be that could be a good course. That could be a nobody good course wants. For him. You know, it's the same um, as what we're talking about with Gwen, though. Like you don't want to, you never want to see some a legendary mm. person have a bad race or a bad or a de- or a decline. Let's just hope it's a little blip in the radar and. You know what it's yeah. like, though. You just yeah. you know, doesn't matter what happens. to be like, for sure, I was very happy. This was really good to be here, and you know, like I just love it's it. Not, it's not French. That sounded, it's that sounded a bit Russian. Actually. That, was that was French. That was, that was Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's for sure, yeah, yeah, it's like it's pan-European, mate. No, you no, need this is more Spanish. <laughs> yeah. Tortilla that mañana. That sounds Japanese. Let's oh, move on. The only Tortilla person here who can actually mañana. speak Spanish is Annie, so we'll give it. We'll give it to her. But just a quick one and, and a slight concern. Like we look at the women's team, British team, GB team. Oh my God, how amazing are they? No, no need to go anything more. Yi is on fire, as we know that, and you know, you've got to say he's favourite for gold at the moment. But as we know in sport, lots, lots can happen. But what's happening with the rest of the British men team? Um, Johnny Brownley, love him, training incredibly hard, very decent swim, decent bike, as he said himself on his social media channel. Doesn't know what happened to his run. So what's happening with the mixed relay team? Team. you know who have we got Connor Bentley under 23 absolutely awesome but never started on the W 
T uh, C S. We've got Dixon, Willis, Dykstra. They're great. They're racing in Madrid this weekend. They might be able to make their mark, but. You know, I think we're struggling in the men's team, really struggling. You know, we'll have two slots if we're lucky. We're not going to get a third. It's unlikely. Uh, do we call Alistair back into the fold, you know, as a, the perfect domestique? <laughs> or Tim Don, um, Alistair Brownlee, back to work for Alex Yee. Wow. You know, I mean, if he loves the sport and he cares about it enough. I agree with Annie. I think we won't. We we would. We will get two slots because we earned that in Montreal last year at the team relay. So we're definitely. We won't have three. I will put money on um, Jonathan Brownlee going as Alex Domestic if okay. he's time. He, if they select him for the team relay, because then they will win a gold medal and he will be the most decorated athlete. He will have two golds, a silver and bronze, and he can go. Hi, Alistair. Let's have Sunday lunch. <laughs> so I Finally. Think, I think Timmy's nailed it. Tim's nailed it. Johnny will be the domestic for Alistair. No, for oh. Alex. Yeah, 100%. Can you imagine the, the moment? The moment. The Christmas Day 2024... Yeah. When Johnny turns up and he's the golden child, finally, after all these Christmases, <laughs> where he was like the second best triathlete in the country, but also in the room. And he's just like, finally, he comes in with his four things on, big gold chain, sunglasses. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to me, Jonathan Bradley, the most decorated triathlete in history. Ah, oh, very good. That would be great. Alistair might actually oh, not no. turn up for that one. He will not turn up for that yeah. Christmas lunch. The Brownlee uh, Foundation um, um, separates. <laughs> the Brownlee Centre becomes the Alistair Brownlee Centre. It is now the Alistair Brownlee Centre. And Johnny wouldn't know either until he went up to unlock the door and his key card wouldn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It is time for Social Watch where we uh, tap into these these guys. You know, they're of the age group, as you can tell if you're watching. Of the, they're, they're glued to social media all the time. Real Gen Z, Tim Don and Annie Emerson. And that means they, they, they're, on my, they're on MySpace or whatever. Um, just, uh, oh, on his space? My, remember MySpace? Yeah. That was the one that like died 15 years ago, right? So that was 18 okay. different I don't know about that. Well, you before. know about it, Will. So. Oh, well, yeah, 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 I do actually. Um, and it's something that's come to the attention of all of our guests via social media in the world of triathlon over the course of the week. We're going to start with you, Tim. And this is what you found. Look at this. Geraint Thomas looks across to Luis Leon Sanchez, who's helping Mark Cavendish. Says, get on my wheel and ride. There is Cavendish through the centre. Milan's out the game. It's going to be a fairy tale. There's a crash behind, but it's Mark Cavendish. Mark Cavendish. Enjoy it. Savour it. Remember it. The world's best. The greatest of all time. Sprints to victory again. I was just there, and I saw the uh, the one he had Luis Leon with him, and I thought... Brother out. Explain this to me, right? Different teams coming together again. The British connection to deliver Cav that incredible win. I mean, yeah, I mean, Cav announced um, like four days before the last stage of the gyro that he was retiring at the end of the year. You know, he joined Astana so he can race the tour to try and he's equal with Eddie Merckx to try and go one better. Um, <clears throat> he's been close, but in sprinting, close is not, you know, it's a bit like Hayden Wild, you know, to Alex Yee, it's not good enough. Um, his team weren't there in the last stage going into um, Rome. G had lost the tour the day before by that amazing, well, he did the shit, he did the rubbish transition because they changed bikes. So G, and he changed his helmet as well. And he really, I don't know what the hell, he obviously hasn't been doing, you know, helmet practice. So he was on a downer and he, you know, hook, help, a, help a fella out. I mean, they're, they're friends from back in the academy days when Team Sky was being born. You know, they both came from the track programme. They've always had a close relationship with Bradley Wiggins as well. And yeah, he got in the train and you could physically, before he crossed the line, before all the interviews came out, you could see you were going, what the hell is he doing? Why is he doing that? He, you know, he's not going to gain any seconds. And yeah, he got in the train, kept the momentum up and... um it was just so good. And you could see the, the genuine emotion of them at the end of the race. They were both elated. And for G to do that after have, having lost the tour was brilliant. And there was a hilarious moment because there was another photo of the president of the UCI hugging Cavendish because he'd just won. But he was hugging him like this, but he wasn't physically touching him because he was all sweaty. 
But at first, it went, at first, it went viral because the same guy is trying to be the IOC president and he wants to be for the athletes. But someone zoomed in and he wasn't even bloody touching him. Well, G and everyone, I just thought it's a great moment in sport. And, you know, it's kind of G's probably towards the end of his career, um, you know. And, yeah, I was just, I, I just, I just really, I thought that was amazing. And I do think he will beat Eddie Merckx's record in the Tour de France this year as well. All right. There Brilliant. you go. What a, what a moment it was. Everyone, if you don't know G as well as TD knows G, that's Garrett Thomas, by the way. By the way, look it up. Anyway, um, I won't even put the link in the show notes. That's what podcast people say. Um, Annie, you you just didn't fulfill the brief here and gave me some photos instead, but tell me all about what, you're, what you've been seeing on social media. And um, for those who are, we'll put the photos up, but for those who are, are, are listening in, uh, it's all about Jess Learmont. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone loves Jess Learmont. We love her at Super League, don't we? We love her interviews. I think as a commentator, bloody hell, she always gives something super special. But I think it was, you know, maybe a bit of a surprise, not so much to the people that are close to her, but further away was that she she obviously became pregnant. I think the timing was absolutely perfect. Um, I'd be very surprised if we don't see her fighting for a place um, on the team to, to go to Paris um, because the timing looks good. But I think what I wanted to pick up on was looking at her social media pictures pictures and how well she's kind of kept her body together I mean she'll, she'll say herself she's probably been lucky she's had a good pregnancy touch wood so far and that helps a lot um, for a woman who wants to keep on training but just watching her like out on the bike a uh, weekend or so ago just saying still really enjoying keeping fit and also doing the weights and obviously she'll be advised very well by medical people as to what she can and can't do she's an extremely fit woman so she's pretty safe I think to, to, to carry on doing quite a lot of training under medical supervision but I think it's just been absolutely absolutely great seeing her you know look so happy in great in great nick in her pregnancy and i guess now she must be about nearly two-thirds of the way through or cu- coming up close to that or three three quarters of the way through or something like that so um she's she's getting there and in great shape and i, I just think that reading through the lines be surprised if we don't see her fighting for a place on the team to paris hey don't you think that like there are certain athletes that it's from all sports right so they go like a lot of women obviously have to take a break for to become a mother and then they, some of them come back some of them don't but the ones that do come back time and again you see them be better athletes than they were before yeah, and you, yeah. you always think that's not going to happen because they've got so many things dragging on their time now and they can't be so single-minded but it seems to go sometimes if you're the right person the other way and I feel like Jess Limon yeah. is one of those people. I don't know why I think that, but I feel like she's going to come back and she's going to be even stronger. Yeah, I think it's, 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 the, it's the northern lass in her, isn't it? She's 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 very strong mentally. Yeah, she's body's very tough. Obviously, we know she she did pick up those pretty serious injuries um, before she got pregnant that held her out of the sport for a year. But you're right, and some women are far more fortunate than others. I had two amazing pregnancies where. I didn't have one day of sickness or anything. Very irritating for a lot of women, you know, and I think it's just luck of the draw. Some women, you know, cope with pregnancy and are able to deal with that a lot better. And looking at Jess at the moment, she seems to be dealing with it brilliantly and keeping herself in great nick, ready to come back into the sport. I'm pretty sure that's just a roulette wheel there for you, Annie. I don't think you should apologise. I think you just got extremely lucky. doesn't always happen like that. So well done. And, you know, you've honoured that by just continuing to be an immense Nick all the time with a 255 marathon. Oh. So, well done. 254, actually. Well, 254, 54. Oh, now you've ruined it by saying that. <clears throat> I was just trying to give you a compliment and now you've gone and said that. Now I feel like I shouldn't have said anything. You just were beginning to like me a little bit then, weren't you? And, and I, just... I was like trying to give you a compliment and you were like, actually, I'm better than that. And now I'm like, oh. Hang on a minute. Let's talk about your sub 220. 220? No, 20. No, sorry, 20. 20. It it takes me a lot to drag this 86 kilogram body around a sub 25K. Yeah, yeah. 68 kilogram. 86, mate. Um, I will say that since Michelle Dillon has been coaching me, I have lost more than five kilos. Like, it has just been dropping off me. I cannot. But is that through stress that she's going to piss on you if you don't do the training? Yeah, like when I miss a session... (laughs) I go to sleep and I'm like, oh, I know I'm going to have a WhatsApp message in the morning. <laughs> you know, like, you know, she's very supportive, but I'm like, I don't know. I have three jobs and two kids and a mortgage and a wife and I have a lot of things to do. I don't know if I can Train. do three hours of training today. <laughs> I actually have a job, but you know, so anyway, 
No, she, it's, she's actually. I can great. imagine her being. So, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Well, I'm. I'm your coach. I don't. I don't want to hear about your problems. I don't want to hear about your wife, your kids. You, that would be Michelle, and that's why you've got her as your coach because she's the best. Yeah. Well, she's cert- like I tell you what. She certainly pushed me. My my swimming, especially. It's it's. I've I've been swimming at 145 pace my whole life, and it's now I can you know it's like 132 pace, which I never thought I would ever get to wow. ever in my life, but um. She, she just makes me swim like 10 k's a week. That's why. I hate it. I hate everything. That's how you get better. Anything less than 10 k yeah. is it's just ticking over, oh. buddy. Oh, it's not. Oh, there's no ticking over about it, mate. I hate every single what, bit of the swimming. What I did Muhammad Ali say? Muhammad Ali said, I hated every moment of training, but I love the glory. That's all you need mm. to think about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I'm going to hate every moment of training, but I'm going to love the glory of finishing 46th <laughs> in <that book. laughs> <laughs> I cannot okay, wait I, for didn't, it. I didn't think of the end bit. I'm sorry. I I know, I've, got race, I've got to race Stu Hayes, and like he just he just won that like European age group champs thing in, in 104. We can for take it. I, I can take I, him out for you. I'll go for a can bike you? Because I can't. I yeah. can't race a 104. <laughs> Maybe like a 107 I could manage, but 104 is beyond my capabilities for a sprint distance triathlon. Anyway. Stupid Stu. He doesn't even look like an athlete. It's not fair. Um, <laughs> now, my one, though, speaking of not looking like an athlete, my social watch clip is this amazing guy, and his name is Russ Cook. He goes by Hardest Geezer on Instagram. And I don't know how I found him, but this is what he's been up to. Day 14 of running the entire length of Africa. For the last two weeks, I've been running on average 55 kilometers every single day. And this is my progress so far on the map as you can see the african continent is absolutely massive and there is still an awfully long way to go but today it's all about getting one more brick in the wall and then hopefully by the end of the year we'll have a pretty cool wall to look back on whatever challenges you're facing today remember one more brick in the wall let's go get after it and i'll see you for another update so russ is from west sussex and he is racing he's not racing he is running the length of africa now he's already the first guy to ever run from asia to london which i think took like 75 marathons one a day but now he's running from nigeria let me get right from the very bottom so i know he's in south africa so he started in south africa and then he's going to end up in tunisia so he's going to go all the way up and you can imagine the headwinds that this guy is going to deal with. Like he's he's doing about fifty k's a day, but he's also like pooing his pants all the time, and like you know, and he's getting sick, and he's losing weight, and he got he got chased by thieves, and like he's having all these problems. So it's not it, it's not like a sponsored thing where he's got like the Nike the Nike car behind him or the On Athletics Club. It's just no. him and his mate Dangerous Dave. Pretty much, yeah. So basically, he's got, this is a guy who's dealt with like um, a whole bunch of mental health issues, gambling, yeah. drugs, alcohol, and stuff. And he's, he grew up on the wrong side of the tracks, type thing. And this is how he's, this is what he's put his energy into, right? So he's he basically found three dudes on social media who were going to come with him, like a videographer and a photographer and a support guy. And he got a van and he put like four hundred liters of water in the back of the van and a whole bunch of shoes. And he's like, let's go, right? So now he's figuring it out along the way, getting his own visas and trying to do it. And he's and he's just running every single day. So he's going to go through the West Coast. So he's going to go through Namibia. He's in Namibia at the moment. He's got three months in the Sahara. So he's in the middle of that. He's like day 35. And he's every day is the same. It's just one straight road through the Sahara Desert. Yeah. And then he no, goes, no, 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 so, no, no. Hold on. Well, the Sahara Desert's in. Is it the Morocco top? Yeah. So he's in another yeah, desert yeah. then. Yeah. He's in another desert. Yeah, yeah. Know. Yeah, he's running along the skeleton coast, and there's a desert in the Nibia there. But yeah, yeah, that it's called the um, the Kala Kalahari Desert. Okay, there yeah, you go. Kalahari, I didn't realize that you were a, in you did geography, but anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> Namibia, Angola, the Congo, Cameroon, Nigeria, Benin, Togo, Ghana, Ivory Coast, there. Guinea, Senegal, Mauritania, Mauritania. Didn't know that was a country. Algeria. That, that's next to Wakanda. <laughs> that's not a real thing. <laughs> I did live in Africa for seven years, don't forget, guys. <laughs> anyway, follow this guy because he just I just love his like just balls out approach to this. He, he's, he may crash and burn, but I just I love it. And he's gonna run fourteen and a half thousand kilometers, it's gonna take me eight months. Wow. And it's for charity as well. Yeah, he's raising money for charity. He's got a hundred thousand pound goal. 
Uh, he's only got to like 13,000 pounds at the moment, but like, you know, he's only been running for 30 days, so he's going to get to. And, then, you know, his Instagram's going up by like 10,000 followers yeah, a week yeah. because of what he's doing, and he's super positive about it. So big up to that guy. Uh, follow along with him, and, you know, maybe in a few more months we'll check in and, and see where he's up to. Maybe we'll get him on the show. I would love that. Anyway, speaking of getting on the show, um, alongside the Short Shoot Show, which we do every few weeks, we also have an incredible um, interview series called Face to Face. You might have seen the Gustav Eden interview, which was so good because Super League has been around for long enough for all these athletes to trust us, which is really good. So we get really amazing interviews, and that Gustav interview was one. The next one is Lauren Stedman, who is uh, a multiple Paralympic medalist in triathlon. Uh, and she's not stopping there either. In fact, have a listen to this. I also did commentary last February at the Beijing Winter Paralympics. I was on the Nordic Sports. And I saw this thing called cross-country skiing. And I was watching them and I was like, hmm, this looks painful. It looks really <laughs> good fun. And I think I want to have a go. Um, I sat on it for a while, ignored it, because I was like, Lauren, come on now. Um, you've already done four games, like maybe it's time. Uh, it's Milan 2026 will be the next winter uh, Paranordic event. And I spoke to GB Snow Sports. I think they thought I was a little bit crazy. And they were like, oh yeah, it will take six years. And I was like, I've not got six years. Like my manager's on the call going, no, should be there in three. And I'm like, I really think guys, like I've got the engine from triathlon, like it's there, it's built. Um, we just, you know, we need to get skills. And they were like, well, so when was the last time you skied? I was like, like, decade ago, 10 years, <laughs> 10 years ago. And they were like, oh, right, okay. So, you know, got me on these roller skis and stuff. And actually, uh, I've taken to it really, really well. I've just spent October through to three weeks ago, I was on the snow and a main main sport has been cross-country skiing, whether that's roller skiing around Richmond Park or um, out in Chamonix with my coach, Fern. Um, and, and so far, predictions are I will make Milan 2026 and represent Great Britain. Wow. Um, I, think, I think I worked out, don't, don't quote me on this, but I'll be the first standing female Nordic to do a summer and a winter. We've had Hope Gordon, who's done, obviously, in the wheelchair category, but I'll be the first standing uh, to represent, uh, obviously, a summer and a winter. So triathlon wow. during summer, winter will be cross-country skiing. And there's quite a lot of triathletes that do it, actually. So I'm not just a, an absolute loony bin over here. Um, like, it is actually a thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the plan right now is to keep ticking away. I've switched back into triathlon now to get ready for this season because it's Paris qualification, maybe lighten up a little bit next winter block on the cross country skiing just cause I'll need a good solid block leading into Paris. And then after that, it will be full steam ahead. Need to really, it, it's the downhill, you know, I don't mind going uphill. Um, it's the downhill going super fast on these really little thin, uh, skis, but that's, that's the plan. So Lauren, who was actually, Tim, our co-commentator on one of the arena games and uh, has a real appreciation for Super League Triathlon and is an incredible human herself, is now going to try cross-country skiing. Can you believe that? I can. She's amazing. <laughs> Don't put anything past her. She's a yeah. Yeah, feisty, feisty chick. Absolutely. Doesn't back down from anything. Uh, you can see that full interview coming out very, very soon um, on all the Super League channels, so don't miss it. Keep an eye out for it. Now, the last thing we do at the end of the show, well, the second last thing is called breakdown. And I put the breakdown in because it gives everyone a chance to just add one extra topic that they might want to talk about, right? So then I go and I, and I leave a space in the Google document and I'm like, okay, Annie, here's your space if you want to talk about anything. Super League people, if you want to talk about anything. Tim, if you want to talk about anything. <laughs> Annie, Annie, blank. Will, blank. Super League, nah. Tim, okay, this is Tim's. We're gonna. This is Tim's topics for breakdown. <clears throat> Let me take a deep breath. Is the Norwegian method falling over in WTS? Hamburg Ironman, European champs, Jan Ali and Max plus four thousand German bikers. The new format, WTS in Hamburg, is like SLT, but it's. Shit. What has happened to Johnny Brownlee? What is going on with the Roth start list? Is Andorra the new St. Moritz for 2023? Is Will the best commentator in all of triathlon? Discuss. We'll do that one. Flora's injury. Vince's injury. Jess is pregnant. Mola was last out of the water. Murray was the second last out of the water. Alex <laughs> fell in the first 10 metres of the WTS and still made the lead group. Alex did the fastest 10 kilometres ever in World Triathlon, beating Ali's time. Schomburg's yeah. back with a bang with the sixth in the WTBS. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy Charles Barkley spent 33 hours in Germany to race as a visa issues with 90 days out of Europe, blah, blah, blah. This is just his one set of topics. Okay, so 
Which one of those would you like to talk about, Tim? I want to talk about is well the best commentator. Good answer. Spectacular answer. <laughs> Discuss. <laughs> Discuss. <laughs> oh, dear me. Mm. Well, look, I knew no one else would pair me, so I thought I'd put a smorgasbord on there across the distances, all relatively topical. I, I, yeah, so I thought we might pick one or two. <laughs> that was I, love, I love that you love it. I just love how much you love it. And yes, that is why it's you're you. I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> I think, I think one that we could touch on is is the Norwegian method failing over the WTS and shorter races. I mean, they're not figuring. I mean, you know, Christian had to do a lot of work again. He was way back, forty seconds back, and he tried to bike his way up or whatever. It was longer than that, minute twenty or whatever mm-hmm. it was. I mean, Gustav is not there. I mean, do they get there? I mean, is is the is the experiment working? No, it's not. I mean, the fact that um, I saw Christian this week since Calgary has been in a swim flume, not an endless pool, but like the big one that, that the Germans designed that you can swim world record pace, you know, for like Alexander Popov back in the day. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the skill set of swimming and it's not just the, you know, your high elbow, your catch, it's the open water swimming. Um, they just can't compete. You, you you can't take, you can't come out of Formula One for a year, come back and expect to win again. You know, you can't come and try and, you know, Finger Brixen took a year out, you know, he wouldn't be winning 1500. Well, if, uh, maybe the anomaly is if you stop commentated for a year, you could come back and be the best. I would, I, I mean, I'd probably be better. I'd be like I was pregnant and then I'd come back and become better than I was. They're just greedy to a point, you know, they want everything. And now they're probably going to do the Iron Man because Iron Man have changed the rules. You, this that you've got to you've got to specialize i don't know what you guys think but you've got to specialize you know the women as well you know you have to you don't see the women jumping from short long short long i uh, look it's, for me i mean it's it's full credit full credit to the quality of the fields in long and short course that you can't do that like it would almost yeah. make a mockery of the fact of, of the, everybody else if you could switch back and forth like that i think it should be that high i, I love that they're going for it but it, you know it's like, you know, it's like Gwen going for, you know, you're biting off a bit more than you can chew, like potentially, and maybe not being a jack of all trades and a master of, well, actually, they're still the master of a lot of it. So if anyone can do it, they can. I mean, Annie, can they do it? And is it failing? And are, they, are we going to see them pull out of the race of to try and do this? There's such different energy systems and, and WTCS racing is, is so quick, you know, so much kind of red lining, you know, even the bite, you know, they're on, even the guy sitting in, there's a lot of attacking going on. The, the start of the swim is super quick. And, and then I kind of like the way as well, like two lap swim, the second lap, they, they push on the pace, no one sits back. And then the sharpness of the run and Ironman training, has to knock that out of you you know um i'm not a scientist but i don't think it takes a rocket scientist to work that one out that you you can't play with a well what was it at the weekend one hour 34 ridiculous time way too short but you know a one hour 40 race compared to uh, an eight hour race or seven whatever high you know I, i just i just don't think you can mix it up with the talent that we're looking at now the strength in depth in wtcs racing or in ironman as well so no I'd say I think it's very hard. If anyone can do it, the Norwegians can, but I think it's unlikely. Yeah, okay. I think you're probably right. But you know what? We've been proven wrong before. I mean, you guys have. I I, I have, and I stay on the the fence. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. They make the Olympics. They will make the Olympic Games, but will they be factors? I don't think so. The fact that Alex and Hayden are swimming as good as they are the race is disappearing up the road. It's not just two swimmers who are average runners. You know, Leo Berger, you know, these guys that are coming out to swim first and second, you know, Henry Schumann, when he's on fire, he can run as quick as anyone. Um, you know, the swimmers are the runners and they're, they're, pretty, sh- they're, they're, they're pretty handy on the bike. Um, and we, we, yeah, I, I, the fact that he's yeah. doing that craziness, test event, flying to Singapore, maybe coming back for the team relay all within like, 62 hours or 72 hours and then the next week he's doing world 70.3s you don't get professional athletes in other sports doing that you know mo farah ailish mcolgan you know the distant stars Elliot elliot kipchoge yeah that is mad what he's doing in august i mean it, it's just like he's going to put the foot even further on the throat like on, like on the throttle sorry yeah. you know even though yeah. the indication is maybe that's not what to do they're gonna well who are we to question the Norwegian method, whatever that is? Uh, I still remember yeah. when at sub seven, sub eight, I asked, I asked um, Christian, is there anything that 
what's his coach's name? Olaf. Is there anything that Olaf Olaf has not asked you to do yet or where you draw the line, like in terms of the weird scientific stuff? He's like, and he just looks at everyone. He's like, he wants to test my poo. <laughs> and I just had this picture of him like, like Olaf just with his hands out, like, oh, you can do it. Just drop it in there, okay? Don't tense up. <laughs> We're going to get it nice and fresh so that we can test it for burn calories. <laughs> they put nothing past them. They, they leave no stone unturned. Um, look, there's obviously there's 11 more topics there, but we're probably going to skip over them. We're going to go straight <laughs> to the last segment. So the last segment of the show is 60 Second Soapbox. Last time out, it was Maka talking... Colin Chartier, this time out, Annie Emerson has put the hand up and we all know that she performs better when she's angry. So you got 60 seconds to stand up on the soapbox and give us whatever you want about whatever you want. Okay, so scrolling through uh, social media the other day, Flora Duffy popped up and um, she uh, apologised for not having been on social media. She had been going through a bit of a bad time and... And she was talking about her knee injury. Um, Flora Duffy is an incredible athlete. I don't think we'll see another one like her. I really don't. Um, you know, we don't need to go through her accolades. You all know what they are. But, you know, multiple world championships, Xterra, WTCS, um, Commonwealth Games, gold twice, Olympic gold. She's got a hill named after her. The pressure must be immense. But I guess my, my feeling and my sort of message to Flora was when I was listening to it was it was all about her knee injury and how her body had kind of, you know, was her knee had given up on her and it was a huge, huge struggle for her. And there wasn't, I think like everyone looks at Flora as such an inspiration, but I didn't find the message inspiring. She's 36 in September. She'll be coming up for 37 in Paris. And I think that we have to be grateful for what our bodies are giving us. And this might sound a little bit of a kumbaya moment, but I just think as uh, athletes, we have to be very grateful for what our body's given her and her body has given her an incredible amount of success over the last uh, 36 years. And it was so down the, the interview, the message that, or not the interview, the message she was putting out there, which I don't think helps her mentally. And I don't think it helps her fans either. There was a huge amount of support and it's not that I don't support her and completely wish her well and would love to see her on the start line in Paris. But I think Flora, you need to just take a step back and go, do you know what body? Thank you so much for what you've given me. You know, I have given you a lot of shit over the years. You've taken a lot of shit and you've given me multiple, you know, medals and, and world championship titles. And I just think you've got to be a bit more positive. At some point, the body does go <clears throat> down. We know, we know as athletes that our bodies are not invincible. We know that we're not doctors. We can't go on working or lawyers or you know, I don't know, a teacher that can go on working into your 70s, the body, you know, the elite body only has a finite amount of time. And Tim is going on at me, but I just kind of want to put my point out there. And I just thought it was a disappointing message from her. I feel sorry for her. I think it's really sad that she's injured. But actually, you know, be grateful for for, for what your body has given you. And, and touch wood, you know, you'll get the right treatment and we'll see you back in Paris. But um, anyway, just, just keep smiling. Keep smiling. Be positive. Tim, you agree? It was a pretty. I was pretty sad at the end of the message. I was like, oh. everyone gets injured at some some stage, and it's you know, it happens. It's how you deal with it. Um, you know, I think social media is a great thing, but you can tell the athletes that don't go on it for a period. There's obviously issues, and then when you do, when they do go on it, often you know, like Vince was like that last year. This year, he's changing his approach and he's letting the world into his rehab. And I bet you that's helping him. I know it helped me when I had um, when I had my incident. You know, by sharing everything, it gave me that G up. You know, she she's had an amazing career, and you know, I've got no doubt she will have great races. But it, but again. The body is the body, and I think she's obviously got you know a great team around her. She's she's able to access probably any any knee specialist in the world. So you know that that's something in itself. But I just felt it wasn't upbeat. It wasn't it wasn't. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to come back stronger. It was kind of like oh, um, you, you it was morose. Today. I mean, it was totally morose for me. I 
I, I kind of clicked it off and I was like, bloody hell, you know, how many athletes out there through no fault of their own have, will never achieve what she's achieved, will never have the support, the medical support, you know. I mean, you know, okay, in fairness, she's worked incredibly hard to get where she, she is. It, there's no two ways about it. But there's a lot of athletes that work incredibly hard and will never, ever get anywhere near, near, not even a percent of what she's achieved. Well, as someone whose body was an absolute dumpster fire upon birth and has continued in that vein and are now 40 and I, I can pull a muscle getting out of bed, uh, yeah, I'm probably on board with what you said. Hey, all, all my trophies mate, are participation trophies, all right? So, you know, I don't... I don't I, I Everyone loves a finishers medal. <laughs> yeah, I've got a whole rack of them in the, in the gym. And, and my daughters are like, oh, Dad! Look at all these medals. You must be amazing. And I'm like, I am amazing, guys. Like, that, I only yeah. got a few more years. Yeah. I've only got a few more years before. What are you going to do when your kids get a bit older and they realise the truth, the lie? Uh, to be fair, they... there's a couple. There's a couple of. I've stood. I have stood on a couple of podiums, and those those ones are at the front. They're at the front. <laughs> so, you know. But like, I'm not like one of those people who've got so many accolades that I just chuck them all in the garage because I couldn't be bothered. I'm like, check it out. I finished second in my age group. <laughs> <laughs> you got to take your wins where you can get so them, need, Laura. Come on. Yeah, you need one of these. Hey. Oh, the Don Family Medals. Oh, That's cool. Love it. Yeah. Only, love only, it. There's only three of mine. No, four of mine, the rest of my kids. <laughs> ah, that's it. Yeah, I'm passing on the torch as well. Putting all my hopes and pressure on the next generation. That's what I'll be doing. Just touching back on Flora. Look, I don't want, look, it's like, it's a bad time for her. So I get why she was like that. But she's been, she's been dealing with that for a long time. And when you come out with it, I'm not saying she has to be, everything's perfect. I'm going to do this. But there was no medium. It was, it, there was no, I've got a process in place. I'm going to figure this out. And yeah, so I don't want to, I, yeah, I, I, I know social media, everyone's just like, hey, everything's amazing. I didn't want a message like that, but it was the polar opposite. And that's just unusual from her. Yeah, yeah. And we wish her well. Listen, we wish her well. Yeah. People turn on their cameras at all sorts of different times. You know, she, the, the next day she might be feeling positive and she just happened to not catch that. So uh, yeah. let's yeah. hope that is the yeah. case because, you know, we don't want to see her um, do anything but go from strength to strength and come back stronger than ever. And we we seem to have just been like having this discussion about all different people. Gwen, Mario, Alistair, Flora. It's like the Richard Murray. of time. Murray, yeah. Well, yeah, I mentioned him. The, 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 the sands of time, like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. Is that what, is that, that what they used to say on the show? Or am I too Something old like that? No never idea, Well, Never watched Days of Our Lives? <laughs> Did they not have that in England? No. no, no I was watching Crossroads. Not... You were too busy on like Coronation Street or East Coronation Enders or some Street. other absolute <laughs> depressing <laughs> show which is what all of your shows are if i'm going to be honest with you all right so that's the end of the podcast um if anyone would like to come on the podcast and replace these two there are two spots available for the next episode we will see how we go um no actually in in actual fact thank you very much annie i know you're on holidays thanks for your time uh, and congratulations again and, and like you were just an inspirational effort from you 254 like, 254 well what time is it it's 254 you're such a humble a humble winner too, which is what I like about you. Um, and Tim, uh, epic as always. Enjoy the rest of your rest day. Yeah? Awesome. All right. That wraps us up for the Short Shoot Show. Again, look out for the Lawrence Stedman interview. It's an absolute cracker. Uh, it'll be coming out very, very soon. And we will see you again for the next episode.